Andai. You talk about a hype game, it doesn't get much better than this. Stanford, the number two team in the country, and UCLA, they're not going to sit back, they're going to attack. See you rise though, just weave it in and out of Stanford going to be led by one of the most dynamic guards in the country, and Haley Jones, she looks just unstoppable lately. Mark just gets it off, and a one-point win over Crosstown rivals USC. And a jump one of the most lethal three-point shooters in the country. Different look for UCLA is just their depth this year. Stanford, the only undefeated team left in the Pac-12. This game to be a terrific one. The second-ranked Stanford Cardinal boarded a plane for the first time since Thanksgiving weekend for a trip down the California coast to take on the eighth-ranked UCLA Bruins. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Anne Marie Anderson alongside Mary Murphy. And Mary, the Stanford Cardinal has won 38 consecutive games against Pac-12 opponents. For UCLA to upend that streak, what do the Bruins need to do well? Well, they've got to play their best game of the year, and they've beaten Tennessee. They've played South Carolina tough, but it's got to be better than that. Up and down on both ends of the floor. This is a team that has to just play at an extreme level. Last season when these two teams met, Haley Jones did not play. Jones, along with Brink, pose a lot of problems. A lot of problems. When you put two All-Americans on the floor at the same time, great things happen for Stanford. Haley Jones handling the ball, posting up, whatever she does, she does it well. Cameron Brink has been absolutely dominating. 25 points, 17 rebounds in the four-point win over Cal on Sunday. Can extend it out to three as well. But what really stands out is just how fiercely these two have been competing, and that is what makes Stanford the number two team in the country. As you look at their numbers, keep in mind, too, the veteran presence against a UCLA team with five freshmen. But when UCLA faced USC the other day, well, it was London calling. Yeah, London Jones, 5'4 freshman whose confidence has absolutely elevated from the beginning of the season. She's been on fire especially in the last two games, hit 20 points, and on average, taking it to the basket, knocking down threes, just playing with confidence, getting the ball inside, making a difference when she's on the floor. Whether she starts or comes off the bench, she is a huge difference maker. Bruins have won seven of their last eight. They have to do good work on the boards today. The Stanford Cardinal plus 18 against their opponents on the glass. We're going to take you live from tip coming up next. Beautiful evening in Los Angeles. It has stopped raining and inside Poly Pavilion, Stanford Cardinal has come to town. We take a look at Stanford's lineup. There's the ceremonial coach dunk by Belivi. It is a veteran lineup with the exception of Talana Lapola, what's so special about the freshman point guard? Well, she just does a great job of controlling tempo, and she takes a lot of pressure off Haley Jones so that Haley can go do other Haley things. But Haley will handle the ball at times, and Lapola will move to the off guard. Kiki Iriafin is just a sophomore as well, so this team, top to bottom, a lot of youth, a lot of experience, and a lot of greatness. And certainly some great outside shooting from Hannah Jump as well, shooting 47% on the season. Taking a look at the Bruins lineup, a much younger lineup overall, because we do see at times four freshmen on the floor. Who stands out to you? Who needs to have a big game today? Well, the strength of this UCLA team is clearly in the backcourt. When you think about Kiki Rice, Charisma Osborne, and Gina Conte, the, the transfer from Wake Forest in her fifth year, did not play a year ago. They need to have an outstanding game tonight. Corey Close. Head coach of the UCLA Bruins, the winner of seven of their last eight. She's going to find out a lot about her front court today and the youth of her front court against a very experienced Tar Vanderbilt coach, Stanford team, and of course the all-time winningest coach in women's yeah. basketball. And there's that. Vanderbeer. Yeah. <laughs> Tara Vanderveer saying we need to play better, we need to do better. She wasn't that happy with the performance against Cal the other day. Well, they have not played well. They have not shot well over the last two games against Arizona and Cal. Shooting well behind what their averages are and their point production, but great teams find a way to win. Stanford wins the tip.
Jump, a great shooter. Very often terrific with her face up or with her back to the basket. First strike there, very often, as you're talking about her sophomore. Well, you can't double down on her because you've got a great shooter in the perimeter. So help's got to find her from somewhere else. Gina Conti, reverse. It's good. The reverse offers you some protection from that block shot. So a very heads up play by Conti. Just sagging off of Haley Jones by Charisma Osborne defensively. Inviting the shot. And she'll take it. It paid off. Conti on the run. Kind of using that Tara Vanderveer strategy. Kiki Rice a little hobbled with a right ankle injury. Prisma Osborne, no good. Yeah, yesterday during practice. A little twist, according to Corey Close. Did not, Kiki Rice did not participate in shoot around today. The second possession empty for Stanford. Lucille trying to kick up the tempo, see if they can get running. Nothing there. Kicked back out and around. Bessoir. So good for three. Do not be surprised with three point shots from Bessoir. She is a terrific three point shooter. They're running sets for her. They feel very confident and comfortable with her taking threes. And Bessoir, a 36% free throw, or excuse me, three point shooter. It comes the other way underneath. And you have got to guard Haley Jones when she puts it on the floor. Another one from Bessoir, letting it fly. Back to back threes by Emily Bessoir. You can see Iriopin reacting just a little late. You can't give her space. London Jones is already at the table, ready to check in. Break for three. No good. Jones. Recovery, nice pass over to Erie Offen. Hustle play by Jones. Haley Jones made a fantastic pass from her knees at Cal on Sunday as well. I mean, she can just find open people no matter where she is on the floor. Kiki Rice spots up for two, no good. Couple of threes to start this game for UCLA. Bessoir, lots of space, knocks one down. Let's do it again. Pick, pop. Two for two. Entering for UCLA, London Jones and Lena Zontok. What does Zontok add to the Bruins team? Man? Well, she's solid, she's a good passer, she defends well, so they've gone with a much bigger lineup. Back door, Cameron Brink. I mean, it is tough to defend Stanford's size if you've got Cameron Brown on the floor. She just cannot match up with Iriopin or, or, or Cameron. Zontak coming around, almost lost it, did not. London Jones for three. Linda around and Iriopin making sure there's no second shot. That's it. Right. Her Vandervert really wants to get her team running and just pick up pace and tempo. Christine Walla now entering for UCLA, going to give Bessoir a little rest. Yeah, I love this freshman. She's not going to look for that three, but she is solid inside. A lefty for UCLA on the floor right now. Only Charisma Osborne played for the Bruins last year amongst the five on the floor. Gina Conti, of course, was out with an injury. Other three new to the team. Denied by Brink. Welcome to playing Stanford. Quick shot up. London Jones, huge rebound. And the push. Osborne deep, no good. Iwala. Osborne with that left shoulder issue. It did not have a great day of shooting versus USC. Osborne was two for 16 versus the Trojans. Shot clock at one. Conti worth the wait. 
That's three made threes by the Bruins today. Conti has a lot of ability, and she just needs to start putting it out there as far as shooting the ball the way she knows she can. It often gets the second shot. And Conti's just shooting 30% from three. It didn't look like it there. Conti's uh, reversed the only two ball for UCLA. Gina Conti calling the set. And Hannah Jump, more than anybody, should understand range, right? Yep, <laughs> exactly. Osborne out. Gabrielle Hawkes in. Ashton Prechtel has entered the floor as well. Fran Belibi, lots of new bodies on both sides. The shot no good. Boscana. Conti pulls up mid-range. Well off the mark. Long ball, nothing but net from Ashton Prechtel. 6-5, trailing. I mean, she shoots as well as just about anybody. I mean, in rhythm, Lapola does a great job of finding her. Let's see how compressed this offense is right now. Just a lot of Stanford bodies. Shot clock at six. Conti's gonna have to call her own number. No good. Well off, Iwala follows up. I love her game. She gets into some foul trouble, but she is gonna be a great player for this UCLA team. Who's gonna bank it? I love the sophomore just coming in and shooting that ball up. No fear. Five made threes between the two teams in these first couple of minutes. The team showing off their depth. That's a double dribble. Tara Vinder helping make the call. Yes, she was. <laughs> Pushing some tempo, and when you got a great shooter trailing, just give her the ball and get out of the way. Swing it to three fest so far here at Pauly. Welcome back, Stanford and UCLA. Second quarter about to begin. Mary, your impressions of the very quick first quarter. I just think UCLA's got to be really happy. Uh, they've done so many good things. They haven't been able to crash the old boards like they do such a great job of, but neither has Stanford. So both teams, it's kind of been a saw off right now. Who's going to be able to seize control in this second quarter? I mean, teams are taking care of the basketball, just two turnovers apiece. Men's team here watching as always. Tomorrow they play Colorado. Speaking of Colorado, how about their performance versus Arizona today on the women's side? Huge win. 72-65, I think. Colorado moves to five and one in conference. Frida Foreman, 21 points. Five of eight from three. Hannah jump, crossover back. So impressed with UCLA's defense. Just great defensive stance. Just read and react. A lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage. And it's got to be because of the shooters. You, you just can't just float off people and try to get steals. Bessoir turns around mid-range, nails it. Emily Bessoir already had a huge impact. Just playing with so much confidence coming back from the injury. Couple of made threes, and that bucket gives her eight points. I mean, we've watched her play a lot. I'm not sure I've ever seen her take that shot before. No. Great drive by Cameron Brink. We were talking about mid-range earlier as well. This point's been quiet. Her only points at the free throw line. 0 for 6 so far tonight up from the floor. 
Takes another. That one looks on the money. The second it left her hands. Yeah, sometimes all she needs is just make one shot and then we're off to the races. Four made threes for the Bruins. Stanford's offense just looks a little stagnant. A lot of people standing around. And a jump in the corner. Shot clock is at six. London Jones all over it. What's the whistle? Oh, they're gonna get London Jones. Bessois, little step back fade. Brink. Going left, strong move, handles the contact. Long from jump. No good, Gina Conti tips it, but ends up tips it, tipping it right back. Junk gets a second goal around, no good. Off the iron. Osborne again, looks good. Yep, make one, make two. Great job finding her. Same spot on the floor, yep. two Marys, the last made one. Eight points for Osborne. Quickly, yep. <laughs> but again, look how compressed the defense is by UCLA. I mean, there's just a gaggle of Bruins in the paint. Trying to get it down to Iwala. Swing it. Make one, make two. You light the match with Osborne and she knows how to turn it into a flare. Little mismatch down low here for Osborne. Can she handle Haley? There's a whistle, let's see. There's an old song doing the bump. That's some doing the bump if you're trying to guard <laughs> Haley Jones down low. It's on it, Christine Iwala. And she comes out after that foul. Cameron Brown back in. See how far off Cameron Brink is playing on Brown. Now you got the switch. No good. And I'm looking at the size difference between the Stanford players on the floor right now and UCLA. It was a great challenge by Brink. Got that hand right in the face of Osborne. No, nothing. Conti steps back. to go off and then Cameron Brink on the move. Jump lets it go. That's our first of the day. Okay, now we're seeing Cameron Brink as a point guard. That's a first for me. That was outstanding. Way to expand the repertoire, Cameron Brink. Take the one. London Jones to the floor, there's a whistle. Cameron Brink, she knows exactly where to go. Puts a little zip on that pass. You can see the two players from UCLA, they know where Hannah Jump is because everybody defending Stanford needs to know where Hannah Jump is. Foul is on Kiki Erie often. That'll send London Jones to the line. Jones, a really good free throw shooter, 88%. She's dynamic. I mean, she can knock down that three. She's got terrific footwork, but that first step, she gets by you, even with all those bigs around her. She gets so low, the explosion up, this foot creates the contact. You mentioned the great couple of games she's had. She's the UCLA Student Athlete of the Week. Nice honor for a true freshman. And Haley Jones, she just goes right at it. The put back there. First one. Around a couple of times. The first bucket. Looks up at the rim. Decides against it. 
Stanford has. UCLA pushed way out. Five seconds. UCLA had to take that shot from outside. And then quick the other way. This is one of the parts of the game that Tar Vanderveer wants to see. Jump, puts the ball on the floor, attacks, doesn't get the first one, just stays with it. Fouls on London Jones, she doesn't get her feet set, and that's her second. She's out for now, Bessoir in. Haley Jones, five double-doubles in the last seven games. Her rebounding numbers are ridiculous. Other than that, <laughs> I mean, point guard, rebounder, ignites the fast break, terrific passer. Well, and Tara's always said her elite skill is her vision for Haley Jones. Dimitri on the floor now for Stanford. Five seconds, Kiki Rice. The defense by the Cardinal. Kiki Rice gave Cameron Brink every move she'd ever thought about. Head fake, <laughs> lean it, fed fake, is nothing there. Cameron Brink, such a great defender. We are all tied up. Use the screen well and it opens up opportunities. That's exactly right. Great pass from Iwala here. We're going to see a stagger screen, but the result is everybody leaves Charisma Osborne. But what a great look by the freshman post player. Osborne knocks it down one more time. Now we've got Pessoir. She sets the, green, the screen for Conti. Pick, pop, show a target, swing it corner. Cam Brown brings it on back, bottoms up. One more time. Screen by Pessoir. Here comes Osborne, and just enough of a fade on that, so Lapolo couldn't get there, had to fight over the top of it. Great offensive execution, all keyed off. What? Terrific screening, have your head up, find the open player. Five ties, nine lead changes. Quick pace, 27 apiece in this top 10 matchup. Last time Stanford lost to a Pac-12 opponent, a couple of years ago, and it was this UCLA team. Better spacing, better motion from Stanford. Double team on Jones. Leave the polo open yep. for three. This is a strategy that Creighton tried on Stanford, and the polo made them pay. 7 0 Stanford run over the last minute 40. You can see Brink not guarding Brown, just sagging in the paint. Conti, long ball. He just leaves Brink there to just be rebounder extraordinaire. Oh. Hawkins, right where, to her. But where she was supposed to be defensively. Right. Cam Brown. Nice handoff, right back at you. Oops, but there's Cameron Brink. Shooter. Four seconds. Travel. Yep, a little slide from Cameron Brown. Yeah, it's called the Brink Impact, right? Like you do make a great play and then you're like, ah, there's just nowhere to go. Conti out, Charisma Osborne comes back in. Look how far out there. Osborne is denying jump. Haley Jones mid-range, no problem. So what happens, Emory? It turns into a four and four game. Yep. I mean, it just, you, you take hand to jump, we just go stand in the corner and we're gonna play four and four like we're on the playground and we don't have enough for five on five. Play 
Dimitri had a great defensive game at Cal. One of the reasons she's in the game on Bessoir. Hawkins knocking it down. You know, we talk about London Jones as a freshman really coming on. You can feel Hawkins coming on. She's just had three straight possessions, offense, defense, offense, where she has done positive things. Four Bruins have hit a long ball. And yeah, Hawkins quietly gets a lot of work done inside. Hawkes, lots of space, is shooting the ball from distance well. 36% on the season. Right now, she's the best three-point shooter by percentage on UCLA's team. She works hard on it. You look at Cameron Brown's numbers and they don't jump out at you. But she hustles, she defends, she just gets in there and Sets good screens. Nice by Brown, knocking it down. Meanwhile, Cameron Brink just picked up her second foul. She's got having a seat. And that's a great accomplishment for UCLA. You're going to have two minutes and 11 seconds without Brink on the floor. Brown knocks down both of those from the free throw line. Iwala back in. Locked up yet again, 10th tie. In as well, Lauren Betts. Stanford, our head coach Tara Vanderbilt, very high on bets. True freshman from Centennial, Colorado, freshman battle in the paint. Swarmed, a tough double. And double in the rim to a travel. And that's where a teammate really needs to make themselves available, moving on that baseline side, and show a target. She just didn't have it. Osborne with the gear of speed off of Wallace's hands. Extending some pressure. Trying to move Betts off her spot. Yeah, I like watching Iwala and Betts going at it. And the paint, UCLA basketball on that turnover. Who's guarding Haley Jones? The freshman, Hawkeyes, and she just is, is defending and giving it energy and just giving it everything she's got. When you're playing an All-American, it just takes it to the next level as far as let's compete. There's Hawkeyes. is on Haley Jones with the fourth team foul. Stamper gets to the free throw line, makes 14 a game. Right now they're at two. Mm -hmm. Oh, just took it right away. Just right at her. Final minute of the first half. Andrew Jones out there with those two personal fouls. Jones the other way. Look at Hawk has his defense again. Betts no putting away. Big defensive stop by the Bruins. Two freshmen. Yep. That's why I was going to need some some oranges and, and like a pillow at halftime. I mean, she has lots <laughs> of major minutes. Containing it, three seconds left. Running back straight through the middle. Final second, shot's gotta go up. No foul called. Haley Jones was looking for it though. And we end in a tie. What a first half. Yeah, great. First, no one could really establish themselves and, and take over the ball game. But UCLA goes to the locker room feeling great despite going scoreless the last two minutes and 11 seconds. Right, 
Sixth tie of the game. Ten lead changes. Head coach Tara Vanderveer joining us now. Time for our Zayo connection. Tara, defensively, UCLA kept you quiet the last three minutes. What happened? You know, Mary, um, Mary and uh, Anne Marie just saw people are just not doing things we need to be doing right now in terms of running offense. We're not taking good shots. We're fouling. Uh, we're not moving the ball the way we need to. Um, it's uh, it's very disappointing, and we need to make some real changes for second half. What kind of changes, Tara? What do you what do you do? Well, the personnel we, or what you're running? Well, we need we need to play smarter. I think Toronto's doing a good job. Um, you know, they're playing soft on Haley. Uh, you know, she got things going a little bit. Uh, we're just we're not we're not playing good basketball. We're we're just uh, rushed and panicked, and uh, we we need to really talk about it and get people's attention on what we need to be doing. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. 32 apiece in Pauley Pavilion coming up to Pac-12 halftime report with Ashley Adamson and Elise Woodward in our San Francisco studios. Plenty to talk about Pac-12 basketball tonight. When these two teams have both been in the top 10 and they have met, it's been rare. Stanford came out on top both times, but the last time that a Pac-12 team beat Stanford Cardinal, well, it was UCLA, January 22nd, 2021. That's the last Pac-12 team to take down the card. And that was in Santa Cruz. Charisma Osborne, 27 points, nine rebounds in that game. She was dominant. A little stall on the clock. We'll run it back again. Meanwhile, French fries for the students. Looks like it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Stanford used a 9-0 run to go up in late in that first half, 32-27, and then were held quiet and scoreless the last three minutes. They open it back up with the bucket. And they clear Brink out and they cut Hannah Jump out back door and you're thinking leaning on her three and she just takes it right to you. You see I'm looking for a shot. Kiki Rice thinks about it. Long ball. Finish! It's Charisma Osborne, one of the best rebounding guards in the country. Charisma clapping her hands together, just urging her team on defensively. Haley Jones again. First underneath. She's pretty basketball, high low. And you just invert that offense, put Haley Jones with all that just ability down low. She turns into the, one of the best post players in the country in that situation. Jump back door. You have just dragged Beswa higher because Brink has cleared herself out and it just opens that lane. Feel how much better the movement is for Stanford. Yes. Yeah. Well, Tara Vander's words to us were that she was disappointed. I'm sure her words to them were a more expanded version, let's call it. Well, Ashley Adamson did not want to be in the locker room, and no, she knows Tara very well. But Beth Swan's doing a nice job of just using her strength, getting low in a stance, and not allowing Brink where she wants to go. Again, posting up Haley Jones. Yep, here's Osborne. Wing on her and Brink just extended. Bucket. Wins on the run. Bessoir. 
This is everything. Yep. But it's a great shot. Now look, Kiki Rice goes right up to her. Gina Conti goes right up to her. Keep it going. I'm not sure Vesqua can play any better defense. Got away with a little bit of shove as well, but Brink, when she puts her mind to it, it just does not matter. Cameron Brink sat for a little bit of the first half. She had two fouls. This one over the top to Haley Jones. Kiki Rice rips the rebound down. Osborne to the floor, close to her face. They play on. Not a lot of whistles and Chris Osborne just waiting for the game to come back to her. Corner, pocket, hand a jump. Largest lead of the game for Stanford. And you can feel the change of the pace in the half court and in the full court. And Corey Close can feel it too. It is time for a timeout and let's regroup. Hannah Jump, you can't have this happen because she will make you pay every single time. The offense is having a game. Eight points so far out of Los Angeles, Harvard. Westlake High School, close to the basket, far away, puts it on the floor, handles that contact and says, I got no problem with it. Again, from the high post, handles the contact, uses that backboard and attacks the bucket. Shoots 58% on the season, 10 and five a game, and she averages 15 minutes a game. That's how deep this Stanford team is. Very often now we'll be at the line right the camera drink is out right now with three fouls. Mm -hmm. The paint point Stanford dominating inside. 26 to 8 in the paint is the Cardinal. Well, the bigs for UCLA have been shooting threes. Yep. <laughs> they tried to post up Prisma Osborne a couple of times. Very often makes the most of her time at the line. There's a foul on Iriaf, and it's just a great example of be decisive on your drive if you've got someone taught on you, because Iriaf, certainly quicker, but just be so determined and just decisive with it that you end up drawing contact. Posted up Haley Jones earlier and they just never even looked at her. Another whistle away as we had Jeffrey Fowl trying to see who it's on. It's on Lapola for first. For the last couple of possessions feel more like the UCLA USC game, which just turned into oh, like every possession. A foul. I was gonna say we didn't have hardly very few whistles at the beginning. Only one Bruin had a foul coming into the second half. That's war. With good composure. She thought she had the mismatch, and then she turns around, and there's Iriafen, but held her composure well. Usually within six, despite a couple of runs from Stanford. Now there's the takeaway. They've got it to six. You need to keep chipping away. Finish not there. And this is where Tardy wants the pace to just quicken. Get that outlet faster. Let's go. And the turnover. Foul on Rapolo, she picks up her second quickly. And the issue for Stanford, I mean, they're a great rebounding team, but it's the point of the rebound to the outlet. Let's, let's get faster and quicker and move the ball down the floor. Rapolo out at the moment, and Indian Navarre in for Stanford. And we're seeing Navarre in this game today. Navarre on Bessoir. Well, if assignment keeps her busy. Yeah, if you're Navarre, you're running down feeling pretty good. The yeah. big tried to attack you as what they should do, attack a little. Oh, 
most important possessions for both teams, for Stanford. Can, can we seize control of this game? Back out, shot is long. We just had some trouble trying to get those to fall. One from 14 since December 4th from beyond the arc. Yet we watch her hit shot after shot after shot during shoot around today. That's a play defensively for Stanford. You got an extra defender in the sideline. Let's see if we can trap. Arrow went UCLA's way. Song tagging very often. And run! A year ago when we were talking to Corey Close about Sontag, she was just, she's a player. And you can see the determination we've seen. She's just in attack mode, but in a composed, collected way. Corey Close has said of Zontag, there's just not much she cannot do. And we've seen that. She can have long balls. Great defender has beautiful hands. What's all that international experience, right? 2022 FIBA, U20. European Championship, Rookie of the Year in a German League. I mean, she just has played a lot of great basketball and she's still really young. Belibi in now is Irioff and Ann Brink. Both each have three fouls apiece. And that's the movement and pop that Tara Vandiver's looking for. Yep, Navarre gets her first bucket of the day. Jones, talk about pop. Yeah, the expression stop on a dime or a nickel or a quarter or whatever you want to call it. Boy, she's got a quick stop. Jones. And she's able, I believe, to draw Zontag into one. Beautiful pass. Head up, understanding where to get the pass off and then London Jones, the hard curl on that handoff, gets Hannah Jump in the trail and knocks down the mid-range jump. Great Zontex. Zontex steps out and picking up that foul. Of course, first Cameron Brown comes back in, Haley Jones at the line. There's a couple of freshmen in Walla and Zontag. Kiki Rice. Ah, they're going to call London Jones for the travel. Corey Close agreeing. Again, nice teamwork by Bessoua. Just goes right up, pats her on the shoulder, kind of touches her on the cheek and says, it's okay. Get over it. Let's get back and play some D. It's really something to see Bessoir having the season she's having the year she is after being out last year, not being able to play. With an injury, there's a long jump, no good, deflected. Fran Belivi, second deflection. Crowd getting into it. Bessoir. The shot goes nowhere, and the fans at UCLA, local. Yeah, we have to tip our cap. I know UCLA's worked hard to get their attendance up. A really impressive crowd here tonight, including the students. Bessoir, think about it. She is out and blocking. Hannah jump beyond the arc. Prisma Osborne gets the roll. She's fired up. Fans on their feet in Poly Pavilion. 1,500 career points for Charisma Osborne. Boy, that strong base handles the contact, gets that shot to go. And you think about that shoulder that she's leading with, clearly not bothering her. UCLA, six of their last eight. A couple big buckets. And the finish, and Osborne now Prechel. By the way, with the foul. UCLA making six of their last eight to pull within two. And off the polo. 
They're not playing off correctly. Jump trying to go inside. The gnat that is London Jones. Foul's going to be on Bessoir. So how's Fran believe he get that foul? It is just the rip through. The aggressive motion to just get that first step off, create the contact. Bounce gets Stanford a second possession. Final minute of the third quarter. Looking for that post up for Haley Jones on Osborne. Stripped. Shot Shot covered. A defense by the Bruins. Shot clock expiration. What a tale of two different performances right now. Six of the last eight for UCLA, one of the last eight by Stanford. UCLA has turned up the heat and this crowd has responded. Look at the defenders you've got on the floor for UCLA. People who take pride in their defense. Cam Brown, known for her defense. London Jones, Charisma Osborne, and then you got Kiki Rice and Emily Bessoir forcing that shot clock expiration right now. 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Bruins trail by two. On the way, now finish. I've seen a couple of those. That'll end the first quarter. Stanford going cold, shooting one for their last eight. Meanwhile, Charisma Osborne had a big bucket and finish, not only because it gave the Bruins a boost, but also because it was her 1,500th career point for UCLA. I'm done an outstanding job of just making Stanford work for points. Big drought towards the end of that third quarter. Stanford again not shooting the three ball well. They haven't over the last couple of games. But Cameron Brink is back and we saw what happened at the, in that Cal game along with, with Haley Jones. And Ian Navarre in for Stanford. But number eight, UCLA, unranked to start this season, is right there. Quick whistle away from the ball. Foul was on Hannah, jump. I didn't even see what it was, it was away from the ball. For a second, Cameron Brink kind of looked around like, please, Look, not me. Yeah, it just got in again. And she's got three. Here, Yonkin's got three. Swatted away by Brink with authority. You do a lot of volleyball. How would you rate that? That was that was a high level. Brink. Yep. Just gets up and says, let me just clean that up for you, Hannah Jump. We call that a move. Conti underneath, Cameron Brown coming in through the middle. And turnover. It's one of those drives to nothingness, right? There's Iriopin in there, there's Cameron Brink in there, there's just, you know, you need an exit ramp, just keep going. Great defense by London Jones. Yeah, you know, Jones could so take so much pride in her defense. She is a net net outside Lapolo. Knocking it down. Yep. Don't dare. She'll step up and take it. That just quieted the crowd inside Paula Pavilion as Chris Mosman comes in. Cameron Brink, a second swat. So that's two roofs. Is that what we're saying? We, we could. That's right. <laughs> Same side of the bucket. And Minopu in the, in the game to defend Osborne. Don't let her go off. But if you get beat, Brink is back there. Oh, 
Now they're gonna get a moving screen on. Yep. It's just one. You want it. You want to free Charisma Osborne up. You want to see her do her thing. Just trying too hard to make it happen. It's a big defensive possession for UCLA. You have fought all the way back. You got it to within two after being down 10, 45-35. Cameron Brown out, Zontag, Besswar, Rice, Osborne, and Conti in for UCLA. Sure, she'll take the long shot. Emma Nopu can knock it down. Stanford bench is just like they won the championship. They are involved. Nice speed inside the best wire with Brink. Look at that defense from Cameron Brink. Three blocks in, in a minute 45. Zontag, long ball, no good. Brink grabs it and again, a game changer. Cameron Brink down low. Time after time after time. Changing UCLA's plans. And taking the crowd out of it as well. Yep. Brink rebound, was to put it back and is able to get best one foul. And Manopu comes into the ball game. You're open. They're just completely face guarding Brink. And you can see Brink say, you shoot it. She does. And the bench says, oh yeah. Ten Stanford players have scored. Brink coming up a little bit short. Both of them. She can get another shot. In the lane, that's yeah. exactly right. Zontag. And a little Hannah jump just comes up from behind and says, you got this one. Just get your mind, just get your teammates' mind off the misses and refocused on getting up to the line. I put some time back on the clock. Oh, I think this stoppage are official. Yep, go ahead. I think this stoppage is good for UCLA. I mean, the momentum had really just totally swung Stanford's way. I don't see UCLA communicating with each other, though, during that moment. Well, maybe they're just worth. having an individual moment. Okay, that's fair. And I think they stepped in again. Yep. Look at Hannah Jow. Keep going until you get that play right. Brick is deliberate with it. Oh, there you go. 7 0 run for Stanford. Four free throws for Cameron Brink. Lost the ball for a second, recovered by Osborne. And his work to do. Down by nine after this run. And the defense of Stanford, four blocks. Wow, Brink. Just an extended awning down below the UCLA bucket in three minutes. And there's no poo, no good, but Brink, next level now aggression. That's so smart too, right? The shot goes up, she gets the inside position and boxes out. Brink, hey, how about another one? Left, right hand, arms extended, straight up, no foul. A year ago, two years ago, Cameron Brink would have been on the bench. She would have fouled out by now. Composure, that's what that is. You know, it's also called, I want to play, right? <laughs> so I got to learn not to foul a lot.
Largest lead of the game for Stanford. UCLA has yet to score in this quarter. Moving screen. And we can see the impact Emma Nopu's had on this ball game. She comes in to start the fourth and has just been a blanket on Osborne. And if she's not, it's a switch up top. And if that doesn't work and she beats you, Cameron Brinks back there just blocking everything. Stanford's in the bonus the rest of the way. It's like it all just came together for Stanford right now. And as they kicked it up. Like that oh, that toe. She looks down at her toe like it betrayed her. Let it turn over for Stanford. And you know, it's interesting. That's one of the things that UCLA does so well is disrupt, get turnovers, and get the pace going in some layups. That really hasn't happened. No poop, right there. Lennon Jones trying to come through, recovers the basketball, but no good. And again, Brink, it's a game changer. Kevin Brink, nine points, nine rebounds, five blocks. Flying in Haley Jones, plenty of Bruins around Jones. And we're seeing why Stanford's such a great offensive rebounding team. Yep, those kind of possessions. Why not? No good. Ripped no away. Emma Nopu. Look, you want to get to our Vanvier's attention when you get in there. And Agnes Emanopu has done great things since being inserted in this quarter. And her teammates love her, and you can just feel it. Everything she does, the bench responding. Drink making it look so smooth and easy. Feels like she should never miss a shot. Cameron Brink, the reigning Pac-12 Player of the Week, 25 and 17 against Cal. Look at the day she's having now. Best war shot, no good. I mean, Cameron Brink has four blocks in five minutes. Yep, five total. Cameron Brink. Oh yeah, we're gonna go left. Domination in this fourth quarter, Stanford up 13. The fourth quarter started with Stanford leading just by two, but look at that, UCLA held scoreless in this fourth quarter. Meanwhile, the Cardinal turned up the pressure, Mary, what has made the difference? Well, I think Cameron Brink coming back to the ball game has made a huge difference. Four blocks in this quarter. Emma Nopu has been outstanding defensively. Cameron Brink's been outstanding offensively as well. And Haley Jones on the O boards has been devastating for UCLA. Haley Jones has nine rebounds on her way to another double double, five of them offensive. UCLA needs to create some turnovers right now. Conte on the polo. Ball movement from Stanford. Driving in and kissing off the glass. Agnes Evanopu has been fantastic since she entered the game. But Tara Vanegar looks at her bench and thinks, I need Agnes Emanopu Ag right now out here. This match inside. Except Nopu defensively aggressive.
And this is where a game like it just tests a team like UCLA. You're playing even. You're right there. You're in a great spot. You're down two to start the fourth quarter. And then Stamper just takes over. Right. How do you stop it? And then nothing going right. UCLA 0 for 8 in this quarter. Ball's moving offensively. People are moving. Hey, Jones glances up at the clock. Gonna do the reverse. And then doesn't get the rebound, then tries to rip it away from Bessoir. London Jones trying to break the spell. cards run into each other. Frank is just... You know, the job of a post is just tough, right? Because you got to work to get position and you don't get the ball. Then you got to relax. Then you got to work for position. And, and Brink has just, since she has come back in the game, been unrelenting, showing target. I'm ready for the ball. Emily Bessoir will go out with four fouls. It's Brink at the free throw line again. Last time she was at the free throw line, took four shots, made one of them. Was stepping in the lane last time. You know, prior to this game, she had been shooting so well from the line. Well, one of two. An improvement from one of four. Charisma Osborne will try to do it herself and give him and bring yet another opportunity to block. Six, five in this quarter. And Brink, you can just see Brink is like, really, you're gonna, really, you're gonna, all right, fine. Let's just end this right there. And they've all been right there, Mary, on that side of the basket, time and time again, playing to her right hand. And Brink's like, what are you thinking? You have got to drag. Whatever you need to do offensively, you've got to get Cameron Brink away from the basket. Or you've got to get her on the bench with foul trouble. Because if she can just play like this, how do you get anything going inside? Lily <laughs> Jones, nine po 15 points, nine rebounds, six assists. And a double-double for Brink, 12, 11, and six blocks. You're like, Not another again. one. I just Please. stop it just as it's coming up seven blocks that is a season high for Cameron Brink all right we're gonna take it out and now we're gonna try to attack her and Brink just follows along and says all right I'm gonna show you another one that's why we're good right at the clock it expires and oh my God. Foul on Osborne. UCLA still scoreless in this quarter. Picture tells the story. Haley Jones is tough to check. Just one on one full court. But UCLA has not scored in the quarter. No. I wonder what USC is thinking. Across town watching this, knowing that Stanford's heading their way. USC had a dominating win over Cal today. Conti. Breaks the spell. Three for UCLA. First points of the fourth quarter. Look at that. There's the tournament we were talking about. They had two defenders on the polo. 
It's just a tough day at the office right now for UCLA. Conti has Brink on her. Challenges. But how about you score three points in the fourth quarter and you're only, only down 14. And again, it's Brink disrupting there. Mary, as you look at Stanford's body of work today, Tara Vandiver telling she was disappointed a little bit in the first half. What changed in the second overall? Well, I think what changed was the fourth quarter and Cameron Brink with the foul trouble coming back into the ball game and just absolutely dominating on both ends of the floor. Well, Erie often did a great job in this ball game. Haley Jones, Emma Nopu. Before it closed with the timeout. Cameron Brink is our jockey difference maker. Look, there's just no doubt about it. Uh, uh, the fourth quarter alone, she's the difference maker. Lock and shots. All right, that's another one. Keep trying. Who's next? It's not a layup line. It's a block line. <laughs> and Cameron Brink is just back there practicing block and shots. That's what greatness looks like. And again, she had foul trouble in the first, or she had two fouls, I'll say, in the first half and sat for much of it. UCLA just looking for a miracle. Can we get four straight steals and get some layups? Mary, what's Brink showing all these NBA scouts we talked about that are here, NBA, WNBA coaches? I, I think they already know how great she is. There's no doubt. You know, they're here looking at Chris Osborne. They're here looking at Haley Jones. They're here thinking about the future down the road, the other talent that's on this floor. But it is interesting over the last three games how tested Stanford has been. Mm -hmm. A seven-point victory over Arizona, a four-point victory over Cal. And this game where it's top, it, well, it was a two-point ball game heading into the fourth quarter. There's just so much talent on the Stanford team. Obviously, we have seen so many different contributors through, and, and Tara Vanderveer has talked about this. Sometimes she doesn't want to wait necessarily for, you know, uh, somebody to warm up at all. She's got too much talent to wait for anybody. Yeah, and they just, they responded. 12 turnovers by UCLA. Stanford is plus 11 on points off turnovers. That's an area where UCLA's got to dominate that number, right? They've got to create the turnovers and get points off of them. That was not the case tonight. And Corey Close calls another timeout. Eight points. Stanford doubling up UCLA 32 to 16 and we've talked about the boards as well that you know UCLA needed to try to stay with Stanford on the boards and they were unable to Stanford 48 total rebounds to UCLA's 29. You know, Stanford has been a, a dominating rebounding team rebounding when we were at shoot around today for UCLA Corey Close couldn't talk about couldn't talk about it enough she said rebounds will be the difference in this ball game. For the most part, I think UCLA did a solid job because second chance points didn't beat UCLA tonight. Nope, not at all. Cameron Brink had a big part in it. I mean, I love to drive to the basket as a player. If I saw Cameron Brink, I would just <laughs> U-turn out. Yep. And the two All-Americans right there.
Oh, oh my goodness. One in Jones. I mean, is that a block or a steal? I don't know how it'll be counted. We'll take a look. I, I just want to call it optimism. At that point, Brink's there, and you're thinking, well, maybe. But it was a block. To answer your question, registered as her seventh block. Six blocks in the quarter. Hannah Brink gets to sit down. Enjoy this one. Yeah, career high blocks for Cameron Brink with seven. <laughs> but six of them in a quarter? You mean you almost had a career high in a quarter? Nicolo sits. Well, when you look at the score at the end of the game, you're not going to know what a battle it was. Yep. It was 51-49 at the end of three. Second ranked Stanford showing why. 39 consecutive wins over Pac-12 opponents. And you know, this game doesn't hurt UCLA as far as no. where their ranking are, where their net is. But they're going to have an angry Cal team showing up, played even with USC in the second half, but just did not play well in the first, coming to town, cross town, I should say. We'll be heading cross town to do the Stanford-USC game on Sunday. buckets for UCLA but it's just so quiet for the first eight minutes of the fourth quarter. Stanford outscored UCLA 21 to 10 in the fourth. Yeah it was just utter domination. UCLA didn't score for a couple a couple minutes left in this ball game. But Stanford riding Cameron Brink's defense. Emma Nopu coming in the ball game. It's a great team win for Stanford. Nothing coming easy for the Cardinal, but well done. Once again, Stanford takes down a Pac-12 opponent. Another win for the Stanford Cardinal, their 12th consecutive, and that will do it for us here at College Pavilion. For Mary Murphy, I'm Ann Marie Anderson. Thanks for our Pac-12 crew. And next, we're going to send you back to our San Francisco studios with Ashley Adamson and Elise Woodward for the Pac-12 postgame show. Well, a fun Friday night of Pac-12 hoops. And how about Cam Brink bringing the block party to Poly Pavilion? Seven blocks, six of those coming in the fourth quarter. We're going to hear from her in just a little bit. Elise Woodward, Ashley Adamson with you. UCLA falls 72-59 to Stanford. And the Cardinal, it was close there in the second half. There was a point that, it, that camera, uh, Chris Osborne got it within two, but then Stanford just kind of stepped on the gas and Cameron Brink. I mean, she was incredible in the fourth quarter, and so was Stanford. How about they started the fourth quarter 15 to nothing scoring run? That's how you win ball games. That is how you win ball games. All right, Cameron Brink, 12 points, 12 rebounds, and seven blocks. It all adds up to a big win on the road against UCLA. Cam Brink. Congratulations, first and foremost. I, I got to ask you about what, what happened. What switch did you flip in the fourth quarter? Six blocks in the fourth? What was going on? I don't know. I think, you know, the team just really needed a boost, and I was ready to come in and bring that energy. So, Cameron, you've had six blocks in a game six different times in your career. Today, though, was lucky number seven. So is it a little bit, it's your career high. I don't know if you had any idea or not, but to no. be that dominant, what does it mean to you? How do you go about doing that? I don't know. I think I, I'm just tall. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of taller players yeah. out there, Cameron. It's a great yeah, answer. <laughs> yeah, my dad was a shot blocker. He played at Virginia Tech. My mom was, too. She played there as well, so... 
I think it's just in my jeans, I guess. It's in the jeans. All right. Well, deflecting all the attention as always. Cam Brink, I got to ask you. So it's your seventh double-double of the season. You guys get a really critical win on the road. But Tara Vanderveer spoke with Mary Murphy and Anne Marie Anderson at the half, and she said, I'm going to go get my players' attention in the locker room because she did not like the way that you guys came, came out in the first half. So what was that conversation like at the half? Um, you know, she was really stern with us. We weren't doing what we needed to do on offense. We weren't moving the ball enough. Um, on defense, we weren't switching out. They were getting a lot of good perimeter looks. So I think, you know, she just pulled us together. She did a really good job of it. And then we really got our offense going for us. And, you know, overall, it was a great dub. Cameron, for you guys, there's always a target on your back. You've now won 39 games in a row in Pac-12 play against Pac-12 opponents. This was a top-10 matchup. It was on the road. This was big. I mean, this was a big game in the regular season. For you, what does it mean for your team to be able to get this win and do so convincingly, especially in the fourth quarter? Yeah, you know, our last game was a tough game against Cal, and it was tied at half, so it was looking a lot like that one. So I think we just came in. You know, UCLA's a great team. They're a young team, but they're really talented. And, uh, you know, it took us a little bit, but then we really got rolling, and, you know, we pulled together. You did get it rolling. Last time out, by the way, against Cal, you went for 25 and 17 rebounds, and today a terrific stat line again, 12-12 and seven blocks. Go enjoy this one and looking forward to you guys playing on Sunday. Thanks, Cambry. Yeah, thank you guys. Best answer ever. I'm just tall. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say that that, that was might great. be a little bit tall. Look who's in the house. Seven Olympic medals between those two. Sue Bird, Sue, Megan Rapino taking so in the top ten showdown. Kiki Rice. That was her only bucket of the game, though. UCLA. She did suffer a pregame injury. Just to, I think she tweaked her foot, ankle area, and so just a little off. Played, but just wasn't her normal self. Kiki Rioff and high off glass through contact. Stanford back on top. Second quarter, Charisma Osborne. Her second game back from injury, knocking one down. Bruins by five. And again, the final score did not indicate how close this game was, especially in the first half, just a slugfest. Haley Jones. How many of those shots have we seen her put down? Mid-range money mm. from Haley Jones. Hannah Jump can do this all day long in the corner, knocking down the triple. Stanford by seven. Her release is so quick, and the release point is so high. She is a weapon out there. And you talk about the uh, whatever was going on in the locker room and Tara being stern. They came out on a 9-0 run to start the third quarter. Another bucket from Jones, and then this was a significant bucket from Charisma Osborne because not only is it her 15th 100 career point, she makes the free throw, and UCLA cuts it to two. She's just the 20th Bruin ever to hit that milestone. But Stanford came out swinging in the fourth. Agnes Emanopu, one of 10 Stanford players in the scoring column tonight. 72-59 Stanford. As you mentioned, 39 straight wins against Pac-12 teams, and they will be at USC on Sunday. So, again, this game was close, and you saw when Charisma Osborne made that bucket, it felt like back come the Bruins. Stanford has a different gear that it yeah. feels like every now and then they're just able to turn it up a notch. And so now they're, they're now they played two back-to-back -back games where it was really tight, and then they we're able to come away with wins. What'd you make of this well, one? Well, I think for Stanford, you mentioned it, is that if they don't play their best, they're still beating teams. The only team they've lost to this year is number one, South Carolina, in overtime in a game that they could have, should have won that game. So for them, it's a long season. They were in the Final Four a year ago. You have to keep your eye on the prize. And this was a top 10 showdown. It wasn't going to be easy. They were going to be tested. UCLA is extremely talented. This Pac-12 conference is deep. And if you don't come every single day, even if you're Stanford and you won 39 in a row against Pac-12 opponents, in this that is the toughest conference in America, if you don't play well, it's going to be a really tight game and you could lose any straight. But for Stanford, they cannot play their very best and still win when they're clutched down the fourth quarter, and that's what they were. And the rebounding advantage was something fierce. The interior for Stanford is the best in the nation. The depth and that between Cam Brink and Haley Jones and Kiki Urioff and everybody that scores in the paint and makes plays, it's so tough. 48-31 rebounding yeah. margin for the record, and Stanford now 17-1, 5-0 in Pac-12 play. It, we got to talk about Cam Brink because she, she, it's not just that she's tall and has good genes. What is it about? <laughs> I, I love that you love 
how she how I, ferocious she is. I love how ferocious she is. Like if if you want to talk about an intimidator, not only does she block your shot, she lets you know about it, <laughs> and she gets that growl and that like that look that would cut glass. You're like, whoa, I don't want any part of that. Like. I mean, she's mean out there in a good way. I love it. And all of the WNBA scouts that were in attendance today, mm -hmm. they all love that. She is 6'5", she's athletic, she plays with passion, she doesn't let anybody get her competitive, wants to win. I, I love her game. I think she's a superstar. And then sweet as pie off the court. I mean, that's Absolutely. what's so funny about it. Yeah, I think she's got a little bit of Elise Woodward in her. I think she needs to play like I that. That's I, funny. Like I wish that I was in her close to that. Oh, such a big night of hoops. We'll get you caught up on some other top 25 teams in action. Don't go anywhere.